Hello, friend. You How are you? Up? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm good. I'm outside because it's so beautiful, right? Like here in Michigan, it's such a perfect evening. I so, know, right? Yeah. It's like, it's beautiful here. So much for the after dark thing. It's like, it's like, right. look at this. <laughs> like, it's dust. It's like the yeah. dust hour conversation. So, but yes. yeah, time to chill. And... Mm -hmm. I'm drinking. I thought, what, what, what did you say that you were drinking? Um, usually, I'm a rum guy. I have a rum collection, and um, so I have actually a rum and coke. I haven't done rum and coke in a while, but with lemonade, with my straw. What is it? Oh, there you go. Classy. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm like, oh, it was, it was, it's a perfect evening for it, sitting by my. Mm. So. Mm. So we got your friends on here with us, and I see uh, Nikita plays long time. Yes. My uh, Meadow, I saw her. Mm -hmm. So yeah, nice Good people. Absolutely. The um, let's give some people just a little bit of background on this. Um, I just noticed one day I was going through my Instagram that you had uh, somatic sex education as part of your like one of your handles, and you may have had a workshop off or something. And myself having like a counseling background as well, I'm so fascinated with the whole notion of talking about sex and education and intimacy and all those topics because I focused on marriage and family therapy. So to see someone else who had married their passion for fitness and Pilates specifically with, um, with just social work and with counseling and specifically with the issue of intimacy, I, I like phoned you in a world when we just digitally just text people phone call yes and you call and you're like what is this i need to know more about this what do you yeah. do but what brought you to this how do you combine the two together so yes i remember that it was like an hour-long conversation we had yeah yeah total strangers just talking about sex and education yep, yep. talking about sex in my living room at the time so <laughs> There you go. And then, uh, and then when you're in town at Lily's for one of uh, Chris's uh, workshops or something, yeah. um, we had an opportunity to actually sit down and uh, it was Starbucks and we just kind of sat outside on, and it was like this awesome conversation. And I feel like this is an extension of that conversation. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So as much as everyone's here watching this conversation, I, I always call these, these, these core conversations are, are these Starbucks conversations. So, yes. So do you want me to start with what the fuck sex, like somatic sex work? <laughs> right? Let's, like, let's, let's open with that. Yes. <laughs> so, cause most of the time when I say it, people are like, what? So I generally start with saying I'm a pleasure educator. Right, and what brought me to the work, so I've been teaching Pilates to a varying degree for 16 years. And what actually brought me to the work, I feel is an essential point to point out, is that I had noticed in my teaching, whether it was an inability or unwillingness to connect into the muscles of the lower abdominals and the pelvic floor and all those insertions, right? So as Pilates teachers, we all know how essential that is, like that core engagement to our work, right? Like we need to connect to our core and all the capacities, right? In a 360 degree radius and function from that place, right? Like working from our yes. body, all of those things that we know. And so I had seen that there was this, this it was, I will use now the term a misfunction, not a dysfunction mm -hmm. moment that either someone was willing to connect or I got them to connect, there was this emotional response, whether it was tears, whether it was anger, whether it was times they would get up off the reformer and leave. And I was like, mm. oh, shit. like what? Yeah, yeah. And teach like, okay, there's something to this. There's something to our muscles holding emotions, right? And there's an emotional response and massage mm. things about this, right? Where there's a neck injury, they're massaging there. The person will start talking about their injury whatever it was, the car accident, the thing, right? And that in talking about it and releasing it, that then the muscles will start to open. Yes. So I had seen that in this work and I was like, there's got to be something to this work. And then 
I believe for me just being a very open, non-judgmental person about that, some of my clients started opening up about their trauma. The trauma, whether it was sexual abuse, miscarriage, cancer, whatever it may be, just life existing in the world as a, as a woman, that then there was this trauma that they had. And that the moment they started addressing it, I would watch energetically their muscles connect. And that then their next session, right, that they were they were able to connect in this deeper way mm. for three years ago i was like there's got to be something without me going to school to get a master's degree in sex therapy i don't want to be a therapist like a talk therapist i love body work i want to to work with someone's body there's got to be some program that teaches about this in an educated way not just in what i call like woo woo medicine yes. right there's aspects like oils and aspects of like what people would dub as terms. And so I found this school in San Francisco for the Institute uh, Advanced uh, of Human Sexuality. And they had this program of somatic sexological body work um, that it's trauma informed, that it's through voice, through consent, but doing body work on people on the, the regions on their genitals, right? On the regions around their pelvic floor, that that's what I would call the, like the hole, like the black hole in our culture, that all mm -hmm. muscles are acceptable to touch, except the muscles um, around our pelvic floor, right? Where our pleasure centers are, that those are dubbed like the no-no or whatever term that people will use. Yes. That then we were trained in massage techniques pleasure techniques and then through like voice consent movement sound all of these different therapy aspects that were meant for healing healing through our central nervous system so instead of a therapy that heals from brain like brain down that it heals yeah. root up through vibrational therapies vibration meaning orgasm that then it truly becomes transformational and so that was a program i went through six, uh, three years ago. And through that, I started, I developed my Pilates pussy workshops of like, okay, how can I take this knowledge? And how can I help people connect deeper to their pleasure centers, but deeper for a purpose of healing and of personal connection to our yes. own, right? Like living in this sex shamed and sex oppressed, but yet we live in this like sexually oppressed culture but then there's this whole other system that profits off of our oppression, right? right. That, that's like, yes. okay, oppress these people sexually, but then we're going to offer this financial thing of like porn or whatever it may be. And I'm not saying those things are bad. I don't believe them to be bad, but then these ways in which like, here's how then like- we, It's we're exploiting all, it. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yes. Exploiting our, our, our oppression. Right. And, so instead, like being like, we are all sexual beings, we need to connect not only to our brain centers and our heart centers, but to our sexual centers as well. And so that's where the focus of my workshops are, is connecting with that and then using the Pilates method of muscular connection for that healing aspect and that connection aspect. So yes. that's a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> a lot. But that's a lot. Yeah. A lot. There's a lot to like dive into of what that actually looks like. Um, but yes, so mm. there's about me and how I was drawn to the work. That's amazing. You've had, I mean, you've had such amazing success with that. You've shared stories of how that um, has been such a breakthrough for so, so many women. Yeah. Um, without obviously divulging people's personal information, can you share like a, just a success story of something that's been amazing you've seen as a result of diving into this work oh absolutely so i had someone who had after they had attended one of my workshop that had never with a partner had never had a vaginal orgasm on her own right so there's different point orgasm points um there's like a clitoral orgasm there's a vaginal orgasm there's like anal orgasms and so there's different there's like six different pleasure points within um a female's anatomy um, and when I say female, those of us who have vulvas, so that's like a broad term that I want to make sure that I'm being all inclusive with, because not everyone who has the anatomy of a vulva would define themselves as being female. So I will just that. 
Um, but those who have that anatomy, there's different pleasure points. And so I had someone who had attended a workshop that after I gave some masturbation exercises or what I would call some self-pleasure exercises, because it's not, just not the point of like getting off, right? Like we've all had those where it's like, all right, this is just an orgasm of release or like, okay, let's just get off on this. Um, but it was someone of building that deeper, like intuitive connection and that self-awareness connection. Yes. It was the first time um, in her, like sh this was a, a somewhat a female who was around 40 years of age who had ever had an orgasm, a vaginal orgasm with a partner. And so to yeah. her, that was incredibly bonding for her and her partner, her partner yes. being supportive and wanting to support her on that journey because it was the first time that she felt safe with her own body to be able to share that and express that with her partner. Yes. There is that... Um, as I would tell anyone in my workshop, if we don't know our own bodies, if we don't know our own pleasure points, we need to discover those that yes. from that point, then learning to communicate that, mm -hmm. and that will never lie. Yes. Right? If right. the right partners, they will listen and they will want to hear us and they will want to deepen that pleasure within the sexual relationship because mm -hmm. a strong proponent that the end or like the downfall the beginning downfall of many relationships is that lack of sexual intimacy right yes. or as from there that point of connection right like how we're feeling and where we're at and being able to communicate that with our partner yes is we're fucking vulnerable right, right. You have to be vulnerable with your partner to communicate not only what feels good, but what you're wanting, what they want, like how invested that person is with mm -hmm. you, with them and vice versa, right? That energy that's felt. And it truly is this energetic sort yes. of thing that we feel um, and that yeah. we need to and build. Right. Oh, absolutely. Um, you said a word, a, a phrase in there, which I think is so true uh, and feeling safe with ourselves. Yeah. Uh, before we even get to feeling safe with ourselves, how do you recognize when someone really doesn't know themselves in that way? Mm. Uh, like physically? Yeah, I mean, yeah, because I mean, you, I'm sure, I mean, you have such a great eye and you're a great teacher, a great coach from a Pilates perspective. I'm sure when someone walks in the building, you could be like, ah, okay, we might have to spend some time on this. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, there's definitely an energetic but most so I also do a lot of people end up coming to me who have a lot of pelvic floor misfunction. Okay. First thing that I see, or I'll see, say, if I'm putting someone on the, you know, if we're, we're starting with some of the Pilates mat work or on the reformer, right, is the moment that there's this lifted sort of breath, right, that we all see away from the yes. organ the floor, right? And we've all seen that, right? There's mm -hmm. it in their chest, there's this pulling away. And then there's also this lack of tone around the muscles of the pelvic floor. And it's, I, that's not a body shaming comment because I've had people of all different shapes and sizes where there's this strength or you can see that there's this consistency, but there's this inconsistency around the tone of the muscles where I'm like, okay, something's here, right? Like okay. something here where the body is literally pulling away. Right. Okay. And when I pause and we start with breath and we start with there's different like pelvic floor breathing, there's different breath exercises I'll do of like pulling your breath, right? Like down, like if you're pushing down, if you're pulling up, right, pulling back, like all the different ways that we can use breath work. Okay. Use breath work. And so for most people, then when I start, when I lead them into the breath work, if they're like, that feels very foreign. I've, I, 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 I don't know what necessarily what you mean, right? And I'll use their hands for touch, right? And that there's time. And so I'll remind people this is time and it's patience mm -hmm. and it's consistency. And I'll let them know, like, I see as though you're avoiding this area of your body, right? There's a disconnect in there, uh, right. right? So I'll let them know, like, I see a disconnect and sometimes they'll share what that disconnect is. Other times they may be completely unaware. Unaware, right. 
into our like we've all seen them right like their eyes are going up they're looking they're looking at your lighting <laughs> what about that picture like they're totally disconnected <laughs> and so really like right like pulling someone back into their own body and mm. like i've had those like those moments and that's generally a whole separate thing of pulling someone back in okay we're in the here and now let's connect like let's connect to what's happening here yes. like in our body let's feel like let's be you... present yeah, yeah yes let's present in the moment and so um and so for some people then it starts to feel like a numbness then they'll feel like they're like i feel numb and so generally that's after trauma and that trauma could be something like childbirth mm -hmm. right like childbirth is traumatizing to all of our bodies and so anyone who's ever witnessed childbirth you can fucking see it's a battle it's like it's like a war that you're going through <laughs> that, that are preparing for this for this journey yes. and that's a journey of healing mm -hmm. and often culturally that that healing journey is not supported and it's not approached as this is a journey of healing back mm -hmm. journey of exploring back into these muscles. And if um, someone has had a traumatic birth, it can be very, it can feel that all of those feelings right from a therapeutic standpoint will come back up the moment yes. those muscles help again. Right. right? Um, right. And then and the who have had births where it was a stillbirth, um, that those sort of things. And then I've had some people never come back for a session because they weren't ready. Right. That they were like that. Yes. And that to me is like, Oh, like my heart breaks. Mm -hmm. So until someone is ready to heal, right. Like that's the journey that we're on. Right. 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 And it, yeah, it is heartbreaking because you know, they're just going to continue with their coping mechanisms. Yeah. 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 And that then as Pilates teachers, not just emotionally, right? That's mm -hmm. a whole nother thing. But then what happens when there's a disconnect from the muscle of the pelvic floor, right? From the lower abdominals, low back pain, inner thighs, glutes, like all of those are part of that. And so yes. we can't talk about um, the muscles of the pelvic floor without talking also about the pleasure anatomy as well. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. The, um, and then so moving from knowing yourself to feeling safe within yourself. Mm -hmm. um, like speaking to that of yes. what, yeah. So a lot of times what I'll experience from clients, clients who are coming to me for pelvic floor work or that maybe they didn't know they were having low back pain or they were having pains and like hip pain, right? That's a common one, right? Like SI joint things, hip pain. Yes. And then they realize like, okay, there's this disconnect to the pelvic floor that then they're like, oh, I did. I had this thing happen, right? And they start, mm -hmm. they, maybe they, they blocked it, right? They didn't remember yes. the trauma, whatever. Right, right. And for some clients, they, they um, I don't want to say they wait for safety, but they almost look to safety to me that this mm -hmm. is an environment. And yes. so the amount of crying and sobbing that has happened on my equipment is a weekly basis. <laughs> I remember like, you saying that, like the first time I was like, I don't have people crying on my equipment like I'm that. Like, you mean, <laughs> like. Pouring out, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'm generally pause. We take a moment, right, to breathe, to what I call holding space, right? Yes. It's space, let's hold space for this moment. Mm -hmm. I love that. Help their hands, maybe it's their heart, maybe it's their abdomen, and then we'll start with breath, right? Because breath is healing, we can all come back to breath. Mm -hmm. Let's, breathe, right? Let's breathe. Let's feel, and and so I can see them start to go to their head space, and I'm like, no, let's feel. Let's draw it back down. Yes. Drop it back down, right? And I'll put my hands on their hands, and we'll feel, and and so sometimes I'll lead it with I sense. I feel like you're not, that your body, I don't say you, I say mm -hmm. your body isn't wanting to connect. And that then that's when the tears, right? Yes. <laughs> and they're like, <laughs> you know, and they're like, I sense that too. Mm -hmm. our, because our brain and our body are like, they're together, but we want, 
it's separate, right? Like we intuitively yes. start to function from here more mm -hmm. globally, right? Is what right. is, um, but that intuitive sense, right? Like let's pull it back down. Like what is your body telling you? Yes. And that's like, those are the questions I'll say. Like, what is your body telling you? Okay, my body mm -hmm. and like, okay, it's this. And I was like, all right, let's breathe into that. And yes. Feel that, right? Mm. The amount of just breath work and feeling and crying, and then yes. like some clients that then I need to back away from. That's the wisdom in it, right? That, yeah. that, that consent, because that's also part of my work. Like, do you need? Do you need to be held, right? And some mm. I, like cradle them, right? And then they cry, and then I'm like, you let me know when you're ready. You yes. let. Me you're ready. Right. And then, all right. I'm ready. Right. And then I can see it. Right. I can mm. see bodies are ready because I'm putting that power back into them. Yes. Right? It's their power. It's their bodies. They own it. Mm -hmm. Continually giving back that ownership because specifically as women, we are culturally brought up and trained that our yes. bodies are of owners. It's not our own. It's not right. Our own. Right, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. uh, a male owns us, our yes. or our yes. pleasure, our, our yeah. all, right. right? Pulling it back into that ownership, like you own your body. Mm -hmm. So that that's a, such a great message. I mean, I, women really need to hear that. They need to have that reaffirmed for them. They know it, but every message is competing with that message from within that they own their body. Yeah, and that from that place right of then like you not only own your body but then when i give them they're like how do i like rebuild right this healing connection back yes. to because then they're wanting to heal and it's not until they ask me that then i'm like i have some ideas <laughs> <laughs> yes things that work for me yes right and a lot of it it's then those like self pleasure exercises those self affirmation and i'll ask people like what feels good to you yes what's good to your body mm -hmm. like, you really do what feels good because yes. often are we doing things that don't feel good whether it's like physical exercise right and that's a huge thing with my pilates work right i do pilates my body feels good afterwards it doesn't feel like i just beat the shit out of myself right we just tortured it and I just tortured myself for the fact of like feeling something, right? Mm -hmm. That's a whole another thing. That's and a whole different pack, yeah. Whole different package, right? And I've definitely done that where I'm like, I just need to fucking feel something. I'm gonna do cardio until I feel like I'm gonna die because mm -hmm. like movement is healing for me, mm -hmm. but movement also helps me feel. And so right. there's healing something and then there's healing something. Yes, right. And Oh, like what would feel healing, but guiding someone by asking questions mm -hmm. by that, because too often in our culture, we just want someone to tell us what to do. Just tell me what to do. Right. Right. And it's like, no, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'll tell there's you what no, like, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no ownership in it at that point. You're, you're right. continuing that process for them of letting someone else if, because if we tell them something, and it doesn't work, then we still have someone in our world that we can blame for our stuckness. Yes, exactly. Right. And 100 fucking percent. And so that aspect of then retraining someone out of that, well, just tell me what to do. And it's like, what is your body asking you? Ooh, like, that's a tough question. Like, what do you need right now? And some people are like, well, I need, and I'm like, no, 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 no. Not a million dollars. Not, no, no, that's not what I'm asking you. That's what this means. Like, what, what do you feel, right? And guiding someone through that. So a lot of my sessions almost become like, as I've had clients that are like, this feels like a therapy session by me just yeah. and redirecting and redirecting. Like, what do you feel? Yes. Okay. Like, let's feel our breath, right? And that's when I've mm -hmm. always breath. Like, I yes. the moment I've paused a session, let's breathe, right? right. Let's, like, we need to breathe. We need to feel our breath. Yes. And now, Brenda, would you feel, would you say, though, that sometimes in these sessions, mm -hmm. people have some difficulty with it, not because they don't want to work with you, but sometimes 
I have the sense that like, people don't believe that someone actually cares about them enough. So they don't want to give their story up because you, most people don't care anyways. So, oh, okay. so by the time you get to this point, there's a resistance to get into the story because not, they don't believe anything's going to change or they don't want to waste your time or see what I'm saying? Actually, I, I feel like I hear what you're saying, mm -hmm. right? The resistance of people like, this person, does this person really fucking care? Mm -hmm. um, is that like that yes. of, um, that we miss that culturally we misinterpret kindness as that somehow I'm trying to get, right. yes. <laughs> like, oh, I'm just trying to get more of your business. Um, actually, no, okay. I haven't experienced that. Mm -hmm. If anything, um, it's been the opposite that all too uh, that People feel very, um, those who are not, let me start here. I needed to pause to clarify my thoughts. Um, those who are not wanting to go there aren't drawn to me as a person. Right. Um, sure. That those who, specifically those who are coming to me, whether it's for a referral or they're like, oh, I attended one of her workshops. She does some pelvic floor voodoo shit. I don't know. She does Pilates. Some of her breath work stuff worked for me. Why don't you go and try? And that sometimes for some people, it's their last resort. Yeah. Right. Just been told like you're broken and you'll never be able to have a vaginal orgasm again. And back pain is just part of your life. Suck it up. It's what happens after four kids. Right. Right. And yeah, that's the message. Right. Yeah. That's the message that they've received. And, but instead, that after a first session, that sometimes all, sometimes I only see people one time because all to hear was, you're not broken. Your feelings wow. are accurate. Trust, like that's going to make me cry. Trust your feelings. Mm -hmm. Trust your gut instinct. Do you believe what that doctor told you? And I'm not here to shame doctors. And they're like, no, I didn't. I was like, find a new fucking doctor. Do you believe that person told you? And they're like, no, I didn't feel right. And I'm like, find a new person. Like, would you be friends with a partner that treated you that way? Find a new fucking partner. Right? You yeah. need an advocate for you and your body. And me just affirming them, like, you know your body. Yes. I watched you. I watched you breathe. I watched you engage. I watched you mentally connect. You know your body. And so literally just taking and handing that advocacy back to someone. Yeah, like, amazing. You know it. Yes. Trust it. That yes. is like, that's all that some people need that they do be like, thank you. I now yes. trust it. And I was like, fucking trust it. Right. And then we sob together because I, I cry out. <laughs> like, I <laughs> them. And like, oh my God, it's so beautiful. Right. Because yeah. it, it's, amazing and it's be uh, so empowering just to see someone stand in their own power and yes. strength. that i'm like yes take that go like mm here -hmm. if you need something like i don't like i'm just i'm just handing people back to their own bodies is what i feel i do right just like right. handing that trust back like here take your it's yours right go along i'm just reminding you i'm handing it back to you take it well, I think I think you're doing more than reminding people. I think you're giving them permission. Yeah. Once again. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Right. That permission to um, the permission to feel. Yes. Um, and the permission to trust that because, I mean, intuitively, as as all individuals, but. I mean, I can, I have two, two boys who are, who are um, like teenage years. And so that intuitive ability that I believe like instinctually, like I can only speak from the perspective of like a woman as a parent, because those, I'm, those are two of the things I am that we like feel, right? Like yeah. we feel towards our kids, right? As parents like that into it, like we have it. We have it. <laughs> we yes. have it. Like it's this thing that we all have, you know, and then we're, uh, we're trained out of it 
as kids, right? The kids, like kids and like animals, like it's, there's this intuitive thing, right? They know yes. the people that they trust and they know the people they're like, I'm not going to hug uncle so-and-so. Yeah. Oh, for sure. <laughs> they're not jaded yet. Right. So oh. all that stuff is like filter free. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they haven't been trained out of that. And so reminding someone like, what did your like five, like, and that's, that I, I'm always reminding myself of, of my like five-year-old self who was like super intuitive mm -hmm. and like spot on with everything. I was like, everything I fucking knew, I knew at five. <laughs> <laughs> at five. I was real smart at age five. Yeah. Like I knew a lot of things, um, but that, that, right? Like giving permission to tap back in and mm -hmm. reminded that, yes, all of the, all, there's a time and a place, right, for processing these like head things and these other aspects and yes. educating ourselves in the deeper knowledge. But so much comes back to like, how do we feel? Right. Um, and that's a very, and it's not simple. It's simple, yet it's not, right? It's mm -hmm. a, how do you feel? But then we we tend to be like, well, I think, no, 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 no. What do you feel? Hold on. Yes, exactly. <laughs> what, what, what do you feel? Right. And then how we're like training and educating. Right. I was thinking of that when um, this afternoon, when I was thinking of our conversation, like how we bring up our children. Or we don't bring up our children in a sex positive culture. Right. right? How are we raising our like future generations to feel mm -hmm. right, right. Our bodies and to tap into that knowledge? Mm -hmm. And I have so many thoughts and feelings about so much of that. Yeah, I can, well, I mean, there's so many layers to that, right? From trauma to religion and how the things that we are, the messages that were sent through that journey that, that, that jade that and that change that. So we can, uh, we can go on forever on that. Um, there's a few comments here. Uh, you said so many brilliant things. I'm like, oh, uh, 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 I want to, <laughs> I want to get to, um, Erica Quest saying to move better is to live better and to empower them to empower, to empower their being. I just love it. Uh, loves you are so beautiful, Brenda. Um, uh, my wife, Alex said too, we're talking about yoga. You're talking about like movements and stuff. And she was mentioning in yoga, how hip opening postures are known to release emotion. Yeah. Right. Like people, yeah. When we were saying about people crying on the reformer, and I was going to ask about that too. Like, there's one thing when you're asking questions to guide that. Are there times when you just lead people into the next exercise and hope that they'll find that connection on their own before we have to verbally prompt them to it? Um, like in a self-awareness way? In a self-awareness way. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So there's so many times that then if I'm teaching someone, I, like not everyone needs to know what I see. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Like as teachers, we all see things, but not everything needs to be addressed until right. someone. Right. Or until it continues to become a stumbling, like a stumbling block. Yes. Them, that, right. that, like, so I've noticed or I've witnessed this, like, you know, hip tension and, you know, whatever it may be. So I don't, I mean, not all of my sessions are this, like, you know, Pause, breathe, sob, feel. No, like I want to <laughs> limp. Yeah. No, we fucking move and we sweat. And then they're like praying for their gods to come. They're like, is Pilates really like this? I was like, <laughs> hmm. It's really pointing out the imbalances and it's working from a place of finding balance. <laughs> yes. Those imbalances are pointed out. It's really humbling, right? right. So work with, with athletes in that realm and and just general population that's coming because of, you know, they, they want to feel their bodies like yes. move better. Right. And so, yeah, so there's, there's all the time, right. That I'll yeah. try one thing to the next and then I'll just take note. Right. Because that mm -hmm. say, if it's, you know, that right SI joint or that right hip is continually tight, like I'll notice it. Right. And then, you know, we, we take try notes and then come back to it. Like we come yeah. back, go through our flow, we go through yeah. our 
workflow. Here's this is what we do. All right, here's our 15 minutes at the end or whatever it may be. Let's now work on yes. that right hip. Yeah, yeah. Right? Work and then they're like, oh, and then I'll ask them like, did you feel? It? They're like, yeah, I do feel that. I feel. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, like, this is like, we'll work on it here. We'll work on it with, you know, leg springs, or we'll work on it with, you know, some one to chair exercises. Right. Yes. Right. Work on it there. And then mm -hmm. we'll pay attention to that. Like, okay, yeah, there's a little bit of an imbalance. And then slowly, as we all know, as teachers, people's stories come out. Right. Like, their stories like, oh, yeah, I was riding horses when I was five. And I do remember falling on my right hip. And then when I was 12, ice skating, right? Same thing, mm -hmm. right? All the stories. Yes. And oh. you connect the dots. And then you connect the dots, right? Right. Yeah. Like, so it's always been this right hip. And they're like, yeah, no, no, it makes sense. Like my right ankle. And I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, I see mm -hmm. that. So we'll just, right. we'll work on finding that balance. Right. And they're like, we, great. That's, so we just went from orgasms to like best practices in teaching a group <laughs> class. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's, the, whole it's the whole package. It's the whole package. I have some fun pandemic stats here for you, and I'd love to hear your commentary on these. Please. All right. So first one, 44% of people said that during this pandemic that their sex life has declined. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I would say my first thing, the first thing I think of is like collective fucking trauma, global. <laughs> right. <laughs> if we're not right. like, uh, yeah, for that, and then you're living with your partner, oh, or or maybe you're not with your partner. Maybe that's why it's declined. It's <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> so it's right. like your, your own orgasms are via yourself, and you know, which I mean, I have great orgasms by myself, but. You know, it's always fun to have someone witness to it. <laughs> right. They're a part of the. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that kid factor too, right? The stealth sex is always not like the best uh, option. Home all the time. Yes, Lily. Kids at home all the time. Right. Yes. Um, okay. So then the other stat here is 30% of people said that during this pandemic that the romantic life has declined. That what's the percentage of their romantic life? 30%. 30%. What's interesting is I'm wondering how they define romantic. Right? Ro defining romantic. Yes. I'm going to ask right. you, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> well, romantic, I mean, I think, yeah, romantic becomes creative, right? Because romantic isn't let's go out to the keg and, you know, spend some money and have a nice romantic dinner and wine and stuff because yeah. the keg's closed, right? So now, so now what? Um, how do we, maybe it's just uh, a lack of creativity. That's what I was going to say. Lack of fucking creative people. Like, do you not know how to be creative? <laughs> with not taking someone somewhere to spend money, like pack mm -hmm. a picnic, yeah. like, you know, like a bath and a massage, right? right. Those yeah. romantic things of instead of like, Hey, let me take you up to the wine bar and dinner. Yes. So overdone if that's what people are defining as being romantic. I mean, yeah, it can be fun, but you know, they're, yeah. oh, they're romantic. But then I would also attribute those who are at home with all of their children, where then they're just fucking tired. They're just tired. That's the next piece, right? Like, I mean, it's not just a lack of excitement, it's a lack of energy. Right. Like, yes. you're tired at the end of the day, and you're because it does, right? This is a thing that. Um, that I often talk about, right? Like those things, like the sexual energy, it's energy, right? It takes yes. time and there's effort and there's intention, right? This right. intentional energy that all too often is lost in partnerships, like like long-term partnerships. Right. That, that What sort of intention are you putting into your partner? Like how are mm -hmm. you really pursuing them that's my word. Pursuit. Exactly. Like, have you ceased to pursue them? Right. Like it's so many, it's so easy to pursue other things. Right. Yeah. Or then defining romanticism as just, if it's like a male, female, just like putting your dick in a hole. Like, really? Is that, your, yeah. is that right. is all of those things just for the end, the end sort of prize or right. is fostering these like sensations and these feelings. And mm -hmm. then that's something I actually talk Shared about. Shared experience. 
yeah, the shared experience, right, that I talk about in certain masturbation exercises that I'll give people. Like, it's not about the end goal, but it's about feeling the sensations and feeling your body. It's not just mm -hmm. off. I mean, most of us could do that in under five minutes, no problem. Um, but it's like, how about, like, building that sort of energy, building that, like, sexual energy, that erotic energy within your partner yes. and within right. Yes, exactly. In terms of building that energy, we, um, my wife and I were watching this show. And in the show, the lady was talking, I wish we had time to actually get the quote properly, but she was saying, a woman is designed for in sex to last as long as possible before that climax. Whereas men are designed to go as short as possible, as quick as possible. So there's this energy that needs to be created so that the two can meet in the middle where the man can last longer and the woman can achieve and reach this goal faster. Yeah. Um, I mean, the general, so there's a great book that I could recommend. Um, mm -hmm. Grab it, but it's called um, Anatomy of Arousal. Anatomy of Arousal. Yeah. Female Arousal? Anatomy of Arousal. I'll grab it and and fit, um, and I'll at least just kind of send it to you. So if people are interested, um, anatomy of arousal. I'll and put that, it in the comment section while we're. Uh... And that in there they talk about the that before uh, the female anatomy is ready for penetration, it generally takes forty minutes of, of like foreplay, of arousal, of all of that for like anatomy wise for our vestibular bulbs for our entire pleasure center be, to become aroused to become yes. fluid and then from that place that that's when the female anatomy is ready to be penetrated and that's when orgasm can occur rather quickly and said so, oh it's this right because we have this measuring system and it's something i've said often to people i was like why do you have such like a dick centric measuring system like the male sets up right the orgasm, like, well, if you can't come in under 10 minutes, you're broken. It's like, who fucking said that? Oh, great. Never mind. Males said that. <laughs> it was like, like <laughs> there is our thing. This is how it should happen. Like, no, there's mm -hmm. why Wonder Woman lived on an island with all women. <laughs> right? Like, for all sorts of reasons. But, like, this sort of, <laughs> oh, like, there's this, like, the time and, again, that intention. Right? That. Yes. The female anatomy is like a yin, right? It's slow and it's mm -hmm. built. But once it builds, right, for those who have had partners who are females, that then it can just keep going and going. And like the orgasms can be endless mm -hmm. and, and going to the point where men are like, what the fuck? I have one and done, right? Which isn't necessarily true because men can still have orgasms without, uh, ejaculating. without ejaculating, right? Mm -hmm trained muscle response, um, which has been truly amazing talking about um, male anatomy and some of the pelvic floor work that how yes. men attribute just aging to erectile dysfunction rather than a lack of pelvic floor tone. Mm -hmm. Right. That then a lot of men who have ended up in sex and that then because they feel comfortable with me it coming up as a part of aging that then they're like, wow, I've actually noticed that sex has gotten better with my partner. I'm like, Oh my God, that's amazing. Right, and they're yeah. like, I used to have to take, you know, the little blue pill in order to get aroused. But then I've noticed, and I was like, yeah, it's your pelvic floor muscles. And they're right. like, what? And so then I, I have that conversation or then more openly with some people who have come to me, I was like, no, it's a pelvic, here's your pelvic floor muscles. Men have them. It's yeah. for first, like, like stronger lasting erections right. that just a lack of tone, like all of us as we age, mm -hmm. that be a lack of tone. If we don't use it, we lose it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. There are some interesting articles on uh, that are now counter to that Kegels for men and saying that actually isn't as productive as they thought. At the same time, have you read anything on that or is there any validity to that? I I want, I'm wondering how they define that. Well, they're saying that, like, if, well, maybe it could just be in the communication or the education around it, but it's like, if you are doing Kegels with the intention of 
preventing premature ejaculation, that that's not going to do it. That's not going to help you. Yeah. So me, so I see what you're saying about erection and all those different things, but maybe not necessarily in the context of preventing a premature ejaculation because in, increasing your muscle tone or engaging those muscles is actually going to promote that more than prevent it. Right. I would say, yeah, exactly what you said, right? It, it's more so, it's not for premature ejaculation. Um, that there's all sorts of different like training for like, it's called like techniques of like how to build and how yes. to off, like how to connect in right to those sensations, right. To build like a better, like longer lasting, like full body orgasm versus one that's just like centered around your Central. Uh, yes. So then to start to spread that energy throughout your body, mm -hmm. and so that would be, I feel as though from just hearing your explanation, explanation of that, that that would be one where there would be more sort of like masturbation coaching around that of like, okay, do you feel that sensation. Okay. This is where we back off. Right. This is where like you kind of like ride that wave, but knowing that, yes. there, right. You kind of come back. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think we don't think that way. Almost being strategic with it, even changing positions or doing something that's, doesn't continue to climb that so quickly. Yeah, yeah. Right. That, right. Not just this, like, all right, let's shoot it to the moon, right? I mean, <laughs> okay, they're like, all right, the kids fucking fell asleep. We have 10 minutes while we're still awake. <laughs> let's get right. it done. Let's get it done, yes. right? There's those moments. Yeah. Yeah. Or, like, all right, like, we're in the bathroom. Think there's a movie with the kid, like, whatever it may be. But right. then those moments of building that energy, building that inner mm -hmm. energy, Individually and as like a partner and so again right time attention like that focus that like both partners have got have to want to do that and explore that and lift yes. and feedback um touch right touch pace all of those things pace. Yeah. Right? you know play a big part and so that's where like working with people like with that sort of like massage touch can help in the beginning of like oh that feels good like getting the body in a sense like ready like yes. to feel right right and like we said before too that counts towards it intimacy like that is like it starts from that point yes yeah absolutely because we all know those especially as women and i'm i can only speak from the perspective of a woman that when we've been in those situations where it's like, yeah, I get this. This is all just because you want to come. Yeah, this is like, this is all like, all right, let's get this done. I've got mm -hmm. it full. And it's like, no, no. <laughs> like, like, shut off. Like, I can feel what your fucking goal is. <laughs> yeah. you know, like, we can all feel what the goal is versus if someone is truly present. Yes. That's completely different right when it's present with you and that they actually have you in mind and not that right <laughs> right like do you have that if it's like truly a partnership do you have your other person's pleasure in mind in mind yeah right are you holding like are you like truly connected to that just like you can tell if someone's truly listening or not or they're just listening to respond but you're right thoughts <laughs> you're not yes. <laughs> Jennifer is like, we know. We know. We all know. Yes. <laughs> I feel you on that, sister. We all know. <laughs> we can all tell where it's like, wait, this is truly a selfish thing because you are just hoping as men to get your dick sucked. Is this what this is about? <laughs> or really is it about me? All of the work that I've done today. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. I read a book a long time ago. Um, Sex begins in the kitchen. Mm. Oh, amen. And with the vacuum cleaner, too. Yeah. Yeah. Or as my wife says, chore play. Yeah, what, what does she say? Chore play. <laughs> instead of foreplay. Yes. Chore play. There is nothing sexier than a male doing, like, just, like, basic domestic chores. That where it's like cooking dinner and taking care of like if you have children like children and like cleaning house like oh my god and I can just sit here and have a glass of wine let me tell you 
to all of the men who are in partnerships with women that 100% every time, right? They, <laughs> they're glad. Just, you, just, you just stamped it 100%, like guaranteed 100%, like I could write oh, that down? Yeah, because there are some men who, who do that continually. Um, but yeah, there's, especially for those where it's like, for those who are moms who have been there like all day, like with their kids, if you're like, babe, I got it. Let me just take care of this. It's just like, I'm sorry, what did you just say? I can <laughs> and just drink my entire bottle of wine. <laughs> right. By myself? By myself. While you not only take care of the kids and put them to bed, but also do the cooking and cleaning? 100%. percent mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Well, it's so, it's so funny you say all that, and I, I, like we're making light of it. And even as uh, you know, happy plies monkey said, like men will be rewarded. That notion of a being a reward. Mm. Yeah. That then there's this like currency put, right? Oh, you just broke. That's the whole thing. Like this, right? Exactly. Oh yeah, sorry. No, it's my battery's dying because we're talking so much. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna plug this in while we're talking. I think the uh, yeah. What do you think about it when we make it a currency like that? Oh yeah, not at all like a currency, right? Because I don't think of it as like, oh, here's your reward. It's not like this patronizing thing. Like, oh, here's your reward. Yes. Yeah, I know she's. I know she's joking too. But like, I, sometimes <laughs> it does become that like. A oh. tool, right? It's a leverage. It's a it's the, a bartering tool, right? This barter instead of, because you can tell if someone is doing something inauthentic versus authentic, yes. right. right? We all sense it, right? We all sense the those at times, and men included, when you know it's just kind of like pity sex, right? Where it's just like I don't really want to be here in this moment, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. in this moment, right? That's not. It's there. Like, where is this connection? Where is this mutually satisfying? Right, exactly. Right. Like what Alex was saying there too, right? Like that, those points that, like the whole point of that is allows you to relax and to come to that place where you're more present sexually because you're not as distracted by your tasks that still need to be done. Yeah, yeah. And so it's always 100% about being authentic. And right, mm. to me, it always comes back to communication, authenticity, right holding that space like there's times like giving permission to our for our partners to be whatever it is that they are right yes. with thinking of like because we're we're human and we're existing together especially if we're living together in this like little like entity right and there's all right. sorts of that happen and responsibilities and stuff mm -hmm. and then it's like how do you still foster that that creativity of sexuality within your relationship. Like, right. Still like, because it is, it's, mm -hmm. it's work, but it should be enjoyable work. Like, how do I like love? How do I help my feel more loved today? Yes. It's going to be different than like, as parents, we think that, or we should be thinking then about our kids. How do we help our kids feel loved today? My two kids, right. they feel loved very differently. Right. right, and you need to communicate it in their language, not your own. Exactly, right? And so if right, right. existing from our own space, if I'm going to love this person in this way, like that, that may not be how they feel loved. Right, exactly. Okay. Hey, Brenda, are, are, you in, um, are you in a rush to go? Because we have three minutes left on this before we hit that <laughs> Instagram. Show. I'm not. I'm lounging outside drinking or, lemonade. I mean, are you in a rush to go, Martin? <laughs> I have nowhere to be. I might actually even pour a second drink before I bring you back on to the second part of our live. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me just log you off um, and as people are calling for one more hour here. And then I'll, um, by people I mean my wife. Um, oh, I and, look uh, forward to meeting her and having this like stuff with her she is awesome i must say too that like just the way that you guys think like you remind me of her in so many different ways it's so funny and she like <laughs> legit just like brought over my the oh, rest of my <laughs> what a beautiful partner <laughs> i know right okay so i'm gonna log you off and we'll jump right back on all right sounds good i brought i brought two books okay perfect do you like straight like bolt to your bookcase and come back <laughs>
go pee because I drank a lot of whiskey and lemonade. And I was like, okay. book, grab the two books. <laughs> nice. <laughs> two recommended books. Okay. Can you write them in the comment section too? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Why you, go ahead. Uh, okay, yeah. So while you're writing those down, um, there's a line that used to say in counseling a lot. Um, we we say that the number one issues, the top issues in marriages are communication, sex, and money. And I always challenge that and actually said that it is communication about sex and money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's kind of the same thing, but not really. Because I think like what you've been saying about having a communication, one, with ourselves and understanding who we are and where we are in that space. And two, communication you know, with our spouse about what our needs are and what, you know, what pleasures us, et cetera. All those different things are all central to us really finding and enjoying one another. Um, say that last line again, sorry. I was... Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, so I was saying just about this, like that communication around it is what helps us. The communication with ourselves and the communication with, with our spouse are the, the those key factors to really finding that pleasure. Oh yeah, I mean 100%. If we don't know ourselves, how do we how do we know anything? Right. Exactly. Right. And, and I know it sounds very simple, but yet it's as simple and as complex as that because then we change, right? We change as we grow as humans mm -hmm. and as we heal as humans and yes. as band and, and life life spans like life um, stages too, right? Like from yeah. kids to old empty nesters, to all these different things and age, etc. Yeah, like I've been married and then divorced. Divorce, right? Divorce for six years, six years now. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, one hundred percent, right? It's this like journey of knowing ourselves, right? Like what we need, but then being able to communicate that. And if we're not if we're not at a place of a knowing in order to communicate, then our, our partners, whomever they may be, how will they know how to love us and what we need and what we want, right? And so, right, in that evolutionary journey and hopefully going on that with our partners because how often have we, whether we've been it ourselves or heard that from others, right, that fear of, traveling deeper within ourselves mm -hmm. um, to then get to know, like, what do we need? What do we want? How do we support? How do we love, right? Yes. That without that attachment, mm -hmm. the, like the outcome of that, like, right. like loving, like, sure. I have like, I, like from a parent perspective, I have goals and I have ideas about my kids, but ultimately I want them to be 100% themselves. Yes. And, Ever that means that they want to pursue and be and do, like I will love them unconditionally through that, whether mm -hmm. it follows along with the path I had when they were like these little infants in my hands. Right. Right. And so same thing with our partner, with like partner where I'm like, mm -hmm. gosh, I can love someone and I can love them unconditionally and still not be with them. Yes. It may not be the love that that causes me to grow and for me to be me. Right. That's really scary. Yeah, absolutely. And if I was to give a commentary on my first marriage, I could say to some degree, it, it was part of that journey that we're on and not being on the same path with that journey. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 100%. What, when I was, so I was married young. Mm -hmm. I was 20 when I got married. I was divorced at 35, 37, 37, 37 I was divorced. No, 35, 35 I was divorced because I'm, I'm 41 now, so it's been six years. So anyways, so 35, divorced, right? So 15 years, raising two kids, all of this thing. And even then when we were together, I referred to him as the husband of my youth. And I would say it and I was like, God, why am I saying that? That's so mm -hmm. weird. But yet intuitively, I knew like, this was the husband of my youth. Like he was what I needed. One At that time, right. Right. And that yes. then our paths were different. Right. And we just, we grew apart. Mm -hmm. And 
we no longer had the same goals, the same ideas, the same this. And sure, like we could have in this like American way, like fought. Mm -hmm. But no, because that would just be no, that would be authentic to yourself. It's not able to be me and be like the full version of me. I could be little aspects here and there. Mm -hmm. It can have expression in pieces. But not the full version of me. And that's 100% what I'm after. Right. And even those friends, right? Like we can look at other friend relationships, not just our primary partnerships, because mm-hmm. that is essential. But those friend relationships, like you can, I can't be all of me, right? Like that's why we, I, I mean, I have a wide variety of friends, right? And I can be a yes. version of myself with this person and a version of myself. Yes. With this. And this, but with my primary partner, I want to be able to be all my quirky versions. Um, all my most at least yeah most right? more, more than with anyone else like can we right. can we land to that like yeah 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 like they don't have to be into all of the things that i'm into right mm-hmm. there's a lot of sides to me i'm like what was it um andrew gibson who's one of my favorite poems is there was this line where i was like oh my god that's so me where it's like dating me is like dating 27 impossible people at the same time like oh, if for an open because dating me is like dating 27 people 27 impossible people at the same time like that's me yeah (laughs) (laughs) they're all me and so but i need a partner that all of them they're like no fucking idea babe what you're talking about but i love you like that's all i need right i need to talk (laughs) about my weird quirky weird right yeah Things I discovered during my like masturbation time, like, oh my God, you know what I was thinking about? I had this total creative energy. No, like I can talk to my best friend Meadow about that and she'll be like, oh my God, that's amazing. Tell yeah, me. yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, this guy's like, run away. <laughs> like, what? Why, why, am I, why am I not a part of it? Can I witness it next? Oh, right. away from my energy? <laughs> <laughs> like, well, whatever it may be. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and like, you know, like Alex said here too, we, uh, we, as speaking as women, are not the same woman that we were in our 40s as we were in our 20s. No, not, a, hopefully not. And, well, hopefully not, right, exactly. And even biologically, like one of my clients as a, she's a, she's a pharmacist. And she was saying the other day, like or, I trained her and her husband in Pilates. She was saying like, if you think about a woman hormonally they change so many times in the course of their life yeah puberty menstruation children menopause you have multiple children there's a hormonal comp- like composition change every time there's technically a different woman every time and men don't go through that puberty that's <laughs> it right so like <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there was um, a podcast I listened to several months ago that it was like men follow throughout their lives the circadian. Most of us have heard, right, the circadian rhythms of like wake and sleep and exercise and sex, right? It goes more into just wake sleep time, but this rhythm. Right. right? And the only time that women follow it is during their non productive years, which means childhood up until puberty. Right. After menopause. Right. Anytime women follow this circadian rhythm, that there's um, infradian. I was like, oh shit, what's the name of it? It's um, that women follow this infradian rhythm. And so anyone I strongly suggest, I'll try to look at who, who it was who had the podcast. And there's a woman who has written a book on it. Because the U.S. women's uh, Olympic team started following this infradian rhythm for their training cycles. Okay. Right? Woman knows... Pilates is really hard to do like the week before your period because your uterus is full. There's this low up. Like why? Oh, uh, I can't like things yes. are different. Right? right. Not, but then energetically wise as well. Like there's these spurts or anyone who's lived with a woman will know like, Oh gosh, when she's ovulating, she's really hypersexual. And then right before, like, She's very intuitive and she's very introspective and mm-hmm. like, and then it creates this cycle, right? Of like, God, women are crazy and unpredictable. No, we're not. We're no. super predictable. If you understand this hormonal, if you understand the hormonal cycle. Yes. And so I highly encourage anyone who's in a partnership with a woman, or if you're a woman yourself, 
to listen to this podcast because it's like, oh my God, it makes so much sense. Mm -hmm. Like so much sense, even everything from like diet wise and eating wise, where for so many times I thought like, God, do I have food insensitivities? Like, oh no, my body just needs more like protein and fats. At right this time. At this time. Yes. Right. Less carbohydrates. This is mm -hmm. why I'm loading. This is why I feel like the Michelin man. Mm -hmm. And so then for a woman understanding this cycle and for their partners, for those who are in partnership with them to understand it is essential. And it was super eye opening. So I don't have the woman's book, but I listened to the podcast and I'm like, oh my God, it's amazing. And I yes. think that was a podcast to affirm like, yes, all of my feelings are accurate. <laughs> and all of it's just, just for you, it's for your own affirmation that like these my 27 crazy people are okay. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and then tying into that, when you're saying those cycles and just understanding our body or women's bodies, it's interesting how with Pilates, how there's a boost in confidence that translates to their sexuality as well. And it doesn't necessarily come with like a change in their body. Like, ah, oh, now I'm this perfect size two body. So now I'm sexy there's a sense of I'm confident, I am competent, I know who I am. And that translates to everywhere else in their life, including their sexuality. Oh, absolutely. Right. It's um, that the more empowered and strong we yes. feel, like the more, the stronger we feel, the more empowered we feel. Yes. Uh, and often when, when people have come to me and they're like, I, want to be this right whatever this is like mm -hmm. oh there could be a variety of this this is where i'm like mm, i build strength so if you're coming to me for strength i can do that i cannot guarantee anything else like some of the other things may be a byproduct of pilates right like the lifted ass and firm abs and whatever else right that mm -hmm. from um this sort of like advertising world of like yes. ideal body where it's like, I don't have, I don't have the Pilates, like the white girl body that generally the marketing, right. Sadly has gone to like mm -hmm. the aged blonde suburban rich body type. Like I don't have that body type, mm -hmm. right. I'm short and curvy. I like I'm short and thick. This is my body type, but it's being strong in my body. And yes. so communicating that, with my clients, it's about finding that strength. Like, do you want yes. to be stronger than I'm your teacher? Because mm -hmm. if you want to become whatever your this is, I'm not your teacher for that. But I will help you find your inner strength. And then, but then through that, right, that empowering of like, you need to own you, mm -hmm. like, who are you, whatever you is, yes, and owning that strength. Right. Because then that changes intimacy. Oh, 100%. Right? Like if and any like any men that I have talked to, that they're even if as much as they may adore the women in their lives, their wives, their girlfriends, whatever, they're like, I find her incredibly sexy. Yes, I understand that she put on 20 pounds or this or after she had babies and blah, 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 blah. Right? That they're like, I, I still find her like, like, I'm so sexually attracted. But I'm like, yes, but if she doesn't feel it, she right. doesn't feel it, that there's something that it doesn't. Come on now. Like, <laughs> that. Right. There's so many, and I'm careful to not be harsh on men because I feel there's so much harshness, harshness towards men that the men that I interact with, are very loving and compassionate and adoring of their female partners and um, that they've loved their female partners through all their shapes and sizes and journeys and this and mm. support them if they're doing bikini competitor things or right after they've had children because any of us who have kids we've all felt that soft mushiness where we're like my body's not alone right but then it's like re-stepping back in and empowering your own body right? Yes. Fortunately, like so much right on social media and culturally and all of that, it, that exists. But I feel like continually reminding people and reminding women of their strength 
that from that point of strength comes that empowerment, right? And the stronger women become regardless of their size and of that if that's continually spoken of, that it's about strength yes. and it's becoming like more grounded in who you are, that, I mean, all of, I mean, the different, I mean, I've always kind of been the same size. I've fluctuated within a 20 pound range with all of my things, but you know, where it's like, yeah, I've always felt really fucking sexy. Even if I've been soft or a little more firm or yeah. this, but it's a place of like, this is who I am. <laughs> right. Well, that's the confidence that we need. And as a man, I must say, and I'm probably speaking on behalf of a lot of men when I say that, it's not only frustrating, it's almost heartbreaking that your voice doesn't matter. Like, my telling you that you look awesome doesn't matter if you don't believe that for yourself. Yeah, it is because sadly, <clears throat> we're trying to compare themselves to other women. You're right. And right. women are trained, and I'm not saying aren't um but within this culture of women and that that they're trying to compare themselves with other women yes and for me this huge thing is like breaking this like cycle of that where i'm like it's not comparative it's like let's collaborate with mm -hmm. other women. let's empower other women let's lift each other up yes. let's celebrate other women and so it's continually putting for me then because i can see that in other women where i'm like no come into this to this group to this mindset where we're about mm. empowering each other not competing with each other right because right. that like that old cycle of like it's about competition where i'm like no 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 no, no. i'm not competing with anyone right, right? that's that doesn't work it doesn't work for anyone it just for creates anyone. anyone right and um especially within these sort of like new waves of like the old waves of sort of like feminine i don't want to say that i can't speak to old but certain waves of feminism where it's like all right let's just repeat what men have been doing where it's like no 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 no, no. let's not use aggressive communication let's not use competition let's not use that let's collaborate yes we grow let's grow as a human race let's grow as individuals let's see the beauty in each other let's call that out let's yes. affirm each other let's right and the more that women are in those circles and so if like speaking to women if you're not in those circles find those circles find them right yeah where women it probably has more weight coming from you than me but i agree with you yes circles <laughs> i mean i'm one of those women right like find those where it's like we're going to build each other up. We're going to tell each other, you're fucking beautiful. Don't ever tell, never allow anyone to tell you otherwise, no matter your size, because beauty doesn't have anything to do with size, right? With dimensions. Industry, right? Like we're both in the fitness industry. Mm -hmm. um, we know how much that that is like body shaming and like yes. a, all of that. Like if you mm -hmm. look at like this, if you appear like this, then, you know, you've reached the goal where I'm like, fuck that, right? If you feel strong, if you right. feel empowered, it's about like all of these other aspects, like feeling good in your body, regardless of the shape. Absolutely. So Brent, even to that point, one of the things I've been saying to Alex just recently is like, she's been doing this whole 30 and she's really locked in with her diet and all these wonderful things. There's been times when her dimensions were, smaller on us number wise but i've said to her you're probably in the best shape of your life right now because of your own headspace and your yeah. confidence and the things you're doing the way you're taking care of your body so the numbers don't dictate health as much as your own mindset and confidence around where you're at oh absolutely i mean i had knee surgery six months ago Right, like I'm 20 pounds heavier now than what I was a year ago. Mm. And yeah, I could sit here depressed and be like, eh, my body's gotten soft, but I'm like, no, my body's been on a 41 year old journey and it needed to take time to heal. And all of the therapy wine and avocados I ate are 100% worth it. All of this, <laughs> right? Like my, my life, like, yeah, aspects where I'm like, this is part of that, 
thing of healing. This is part of living in our body. This is part of giving yes. our brain to pause and feel. Because, mm -hmm. and, and I can look at the times in my life where others would say, wow, you looked great. You were in the mm -hmm. best of your life. I'm like, no, I was struggling with anxiety, depression. That's why I was working out three or four right. hours. Yeah. Like, that wasn't healthy for me here. Mm -mm. Like, no, my body, when I'm healthy here, and then moving for from a place of like healing and enjoyment, yeah. versus myself up or versus like, I just need to process some shit. So I'm going to be on like, the cardio equipment for two hours a day at the gym, because that's the healthy way instead of just like for your mental health. Yeah. Pardon? Yeah, like for your mental health in that moment. Yeah, like for my mental health, like that's what I needed. Well, mm. body size reflected that because I was processing a lot because I needed that. It had nothing to do with, but what was interesting is seeing other people's response to my body where I'm like, what? Like when other people are like, oh, you look so good. You've lost so much weight. Where I'm like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> that's for any of you all. Right. And so I have very strong feelings towards commenting on other people's size and shape yes. or seeing if people have lost weight or gained weight. Mm -hmm. We generally attribute our own feelings to that. Like, oh, someone's losing weight. They must be trying, like, they maybe, must yeah. be in place now. Like, no, maybe they're not. Mm -hmm. Like, I wasn't in a good place two years ago. I lost a lot of weight, but because that was the only thing I knew how to process. And so like, st like ceasing as a culture to do that, and especially as fitness professionals, when we see those sort of things, right. And for you coming from this therapy background of understanding that there's this time and place for it of, yes. you know, and then like, yeah, that's a healthier way than, you know, me at home, like, you know, sitting and like drinking like bottles of wine at night. Yeah, it's healthier to be <laughs> like me on, on the elliptical and the rowing machine and whatever else. But it is what it is. It right? is. Yeah, exactly. That's mental health to necessarily body. Um, mm. Yeah. Um, swinging back to our stats for a moment. Yes, please. Yes. So 14% of people said that their sex life has improved during this pandemic. 14%. Wow. 14%. So are you asking me to comment on that? Yeah. Like, I mean, like, what's four, like, four, like 14%? Like, how, like, how do we get 14%? Like, just like, just shy, of, just, just slightly over 10% of people are happier. Right. Just over. Where I'm like, what? Just is over. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, I always find statistics really funny because I didn't take that questionnaire. Like, who took it? Um, like, who were yeah. they, they interviewed <laughs> for their, like, during the pandemic, right? Those mm. who were at home, right? Like, how much Pornhub did you watch? <laughs> right. right? Like, or how many times do you go out while the kids are on their afternoon nap? <laughs> yes, Exactly. Right, whatever it may be. But what was interesting is that during this whole like quarantine time when we're all at home is how it brings everything to the surface, right? Like yes. all the good, the bad, the, the things, all the right. like there's no hiding from your partners, your kids, your whatever it may be. Right. Like how that's either towards either way. I see the beauty in it that either relationships falling apart or relationships coming closer together or those things where it's like, all right, this is highlighted the things to work on. It's all productive. Yeah. It's all productive, right? The discrepancies in our relationship of like, yeah, it's now evident that I'm the one doing all of the cooking and cleaning. Right. <laughs> yes. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. From those sort of spaces. And so maybe those 14% are those where it's like, yeah, my partner does is so great with the kids or they do so much cooking like this is amazing and then they realized and then they were home and they had more time at home and they weren't exhausted from work and so they're like let's fuck because yeah. it's healing and this is great and this is what we can control right now so let's control it <laughs> right scheduling versus spontaneity 
like how I feel about those. Yeah, how do you feel about those? Um, I, God, I don't, I don't ever feel like scheduling is great. Like, babe, Sunday ten o'clock. This is our intimacy time. Right. Right. Fridays at eight p.m. How's that sound for you? Like, I absolutely. Let's talk about intimacy. <laughs> Maybe it'll foster some intimacy after we're mm-hmm. done. Not necessarily between you and I. I mean, you and I are being intimate, but you know. Yes. Hope that was your wife partying like yes intimacy afterwards um, but not even necessarily the spontaneity but their in intention is what i would say i like the word intention yeah that this intentional aspect because mm-hmm. we can wait in the two right it takes two for all things so if we're always waiting for someone else like oh they're going to be spontaneous but if we're not communicating our needs mm-hmm. and not being intentional about that then right. Like, there there has to be intention, especially as a relationship progresses and grows. If you want it yes. to grow, right? I'm gonna walk us inside as I so. <laughs> no, I, yes. like slowly fading. You can't see my eyeballs anymore. <laughs> here, as you, you fell on my right. I'm still here. I'm still here. Okay. Um, but yeah, yes. intentionality is so key because I mean, like, and that's when there's an intentionality and there's a confidence and a communication there, then there's still that safety and there's still the intimacy that doesn't feel threatened by a lack of activity because you know that there's intention there. I'm tired. These kids, are, like, if you whatever it is, whatever the reasons are that sex isn't happening, but if there's an intentionality there in terms of I want to, I still desire yeah. you, but this just is not going to happen tonight. That's totally different than hoping it was going to happen, that it never, never panned out sort of thing. Yeah. And then if you're not communicating what your intentions are, yes. like, or yeah, like all of that where, um, yeah, I mean, everything takes effort. And I feel yes. like often that we forget in relationships is that it takes intention and effort. Mm-hmm. Um, because we're like, oh yeah, now we're in this relationship. They're there. They ain't going anywhere. And it's like, wait, what? (laughs) Right. Like how often have certain relationships failed, you know, after like certain points where it's like, yeah, but put an effort and attention to pay attention to what your partner needed. Did they communicate? Right. Because then some, I mean, especially like in like dating relationships, right. Those certain like weeks and months and years sort of tests where it's like, all right, are you going to start communicating your needs, Mm -hmm. wants and your desires? Are you going to grow as people? Or is it just going to be like, "Mm," right? Right. And exist. Yeah. Like, "Mm." and then we're like, God, I wonder what their sex life is like. (laughs) Alex and I totally like that all the time. I play with friends, right? Like at the bar. Right, the couple that's at the table, that's like and they're t- staring down, like head down the whole time. Yeah. You know what? It's like, are, do they haven't looked up once? I know. Yeah. Like where it's like, oh my god, this must be terrible, and they <laughs> this is normal. Like that's their norm. Normal. I mean, really, what is normal? Right. <laughs> Those things. It's like one of my fun games with where like people like what do you think their sex life is like? Where it's like, oh no, this is totally like a like five minute, like overdone. Yes. Probably hasn't have an, had an orgasm in five or 10 years. Mm-hmm. But, Civil duty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's only missionary style, 100%. So, yeah. Yeah. What was that that someone, oh, dancing, a vertical expression of a horizontal desire. I like that. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Design. And it will be at a wedding or like some kind of party or something. And we're watching how people dance. We're like, they're getting it on tonight. Yeah. <laughs> but how often as Pilates teachers, right, that when I work with certain clients who have like, almost like limited hip mobility, where I'm like, how do they have sex? <laughs> right. right, where I'm like, what is your... Right, and especially if I train both partners, right? Yes, yeah. Like the husband and the wife, and I'm like, mm. <laughs> like he didn't know how to tilt his pelvis, right? He didn't even 
and it's no matter how much I tried to explain to okay, there's so, there's no proprioception, there's no spatial over it. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> how, how I wonder how this is. Like that's instantly where my head goes. I'm like, mm, and I no wonder uh, no wonder his wife feels so sad every time she comes in. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> this is a confessions of a Pilates teacher right now. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Like it's all, no, but I, I 100% think that. And then like certain like um, females that I've worked with who have male partners, right? They're like, oh my God, can you teach my husband this hip work? I'm like, um, if he's open to it, I can absolutely. <laughs> <Right. Yeah. laughs> They're like, he needs this. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, 100% where it's like, you need to understand how to move your hips, right? Like right. how to find rhythm, how to find that engagement. Low, yeah, right, exactly, articulation. And and um, when I had Brooke on, Brooke Seiler, and we're talking through core conversations, and she was saying about some people are so rigid in their spine, and they've been taught to stay rigid and have no articulation. And she's like, if you could do it in sex, you can do it in Pilates. But sadly, so most people probably can't do it in sex. <laughs> right. right. Right? Where it's like, that's smooth. Like, our body's been designed to move and move in all of the different ways, right? So, like, yeah, watching, someone doesn't need to be able to follow a beat, but if they can't, like, articulate their spine, and I've literally said, I'm looking at um, one of my, like, big like Swiss ball things right now. I've literally set certain clients on it. I was like, we're gonna move our pelvis back. And, yes, and right. Inside they're like, this is the most awkward thing. I was like, I know, but. <laughs> <laughs> but this is your first time, so we understand. <laughs> <laughs> pelvis. Yeah. Your pelvis is meant to move and let's create a circle. Or I've advised people like take a belly dancing class. Like take mm. a belly dancing class, like you need, to learn how to move your pelvis like forward back and then there's a rhythm so let's find mm -hmm. rhythm and believe me your wife will thank you your wife will thank me and you for finding this rhythm and finding your pelvis and how to move it because then in my head I'm like how, how have I not known this until now <laughs> but, but maybe me coming from a Pilates teacher that any of my past sexual partners, if, if I felt things, I'm like, all right, let's pause for a moment. Yes. <laughs> or like next session, we're going to work on this. We're going to work. Mm. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, yeah, rhythm. Rhythm. So now we um, see Sammy's question there. We have touched on that a little bit, but um, a, a lot of what you've been talking about is with, women and just that sense of like not being in touch with their bodies and stuff. Have you had any men who've just been referred to you point blank or is this something you've just discovered as you've been working with your men? Um, like men referred to me for pelvic floor stuff? Yep. Um, uh, not inadvertently, no. Okay, yep. But for men who have come to me who do a lot of like powerlifting and strength training. Mm -hmm. Generally, I start with lower ab and pelvic floor connection. Yes. Um, because I do realize the cultural sensitivities to men. Mm -hmm. and, and for me, speaking from a, like a female perspective, where it's like, I want to be very sensitive from that like gender gap of working with someone. Yes. Right. Of teaching them. Okay. Like, how are you taught to brace when you're squatting, when you're right, all of the things. Right. And especially if it's something they're doing repetitive, repetitively. Right. Because I can see, right. If they're anytime they're doing an engagement, if they're pushing down on that bearing down, yep. right? bearing down, I'm like, all right, most likely there's, and especially then like 40 plus mm -hmm. right like necessarily the 20 year olds, but the 40 plus um, population. I'm like, all right, this, you know, could be some misfunction here. Yes. Um, and so after doing some of the teaching them, some of the breathing, some of the engagement techniques, right? In the basic roll up, right? Like how to pull in and up, right? Mm -hmm. Balls to your throat is a, is a cue that I use. Most men are like, oh, okay. All right, yeah. balls up, got it. 
right? Instead of, because it's like, as like how, I, and it was actually another male who taught me that, like, oh, you mean pull my balls to my throat? I'm like, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. That. Yes. And yeah. so I used that because that client helped me find that. You find a, a cue that connects with men. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's not enough of those cues out there because I, I mean, that's my whole thing on like gender centric cues and stuff. But like, that's exactly it. You find a cue that connects with men then you don't have to talk about all like a technical and functional anatomy design to get them to that place, right? Force them with anatomy, right? I really try to not do that, right? Like when I teach women how to like squat pop properly, where I'm like, don't pee on your shoes, aim your vagina behind you. And they're like, oh, no one ever told me that. And I'm like, yeah, you don't like just aim it behind you. And they're like, oh, okay. Right, and I've offered that to many of my like male like trainer friends where I was like, and they're like, Okay, I could say that. I could say that you get. I was like, however you say it, right? right. Like, pee on your shoes. Like, that's a great one. Because right. us women who have been out in the world, the amount of female friends that I've taught how to squat at music festivals and outdoor hiking to not mm. pee on their shoes yes. or hover over public toilets. Hover over, <laughs> yes. Those who don't want to sit down, I was like, aim it behind you. Don't right. pee, aim it. And they're like, oh, I was like, that's proper squat technique. There you go. <laughs> Um, there you go. Right. But then, yeah, like working with men where it has helped them. Right. And, but what's in that, then they thank me. They're like, my wife would like to thank you. Mm. And like, Oh, tell her she's so welcome. Right. It's like, you know, his like newfound muscles or connection or vice versa. Right. Mm. Like it was like women who have found like pelvic floor strength. And that then they're like, my husband would like to thank you, right? And I mean, right, you get like you get in testimonial letters from the person you don't train, right? For my yes. don't like, thank you. I will pay for these sessions for the rest of her life, right? For the life, right? That then I notice a difference, and I was like, it's amazing what Pilates does, right? Mm -hmm. Best in the biz, right? <laughs> it, right, like, but that awareness, right? That pelvic. Right that like muscle connection and so yeah so yeah absolutely like both but men haven't at this point have not specifically been sent to me for that although right. I have it right. um, in a variety it's a tough conversation to have I mean like I'm looking at this like when I called you initially uh, there's a part of me that's like, ah, oh, I can't do what you do because women are a place where they can have these interested conversations with you and you can get them through this. I can't help women with it and men aren't ready to talk about it. I'm still trying to get men into the Pilates studio. Hmm. Um, yeah, that's interesting. I mean, half of my private clients are males. Right. That's the yeah, same. Yeah. Like, you know, like, but still, it's like, it's, it's, I don't know, maybe I need to just bring it up, just like just throw it on the table and let's talk about it sort of thing. But like, but you like you sniff it out, like you have it in situations where you recognize things. And we, I don't know, like it's just, it's just interesting how maybe even like we've said before, there's a machismo with it. Like there's a sense of being a man, I'll just figure it out. Like I have no problem here sort of thing too. Yeah, I mean, I sense that more like what you said, like that like male perspective in some of my like athletes. And because as with, with, most professional athletes, they started as a young child, like with whatever their sport is, right? Like, oh, I started playing football at age three. I'm now in the NFL. Or I started Olympic swimming at three. Or I started swimming at three. I'm now an Olympic swimmer, right? And so what's interesting is to see developmentally how generally there's a lack of pelvic floor connection. Yes. Um, and every single professional athlete that I've trained, um, specifically men who then are coming to me with low back tension or this anteriorly tilted pelvis. Yes. Sprinting or when they're running or they're having this continual pain. And then I'm looking at them and I'm, I, like my female clients, it'll be very different. I'll be like, mm -hmm. okay, do you sense this? Have you ever had a vaginal orgasm? Because I've also been trained with those things and there's this. Yes. And, and there's a, there's leading questions and you know yeah. where to take it. Yeah. And if they're like, yeah, actually I do. And I was like, I feel it might be this. I feel like yeah. there's pelvic floor connection and right. I feel help. And they'll be like 100%. Right. right. 
not do that with. I do not approach it in that way. Right? Right, 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 right. Yeah. I'll move them in and then I'll start to just ask some different body questions, right? I'll see an mm -hmm. thigh connection. I'll see a lack yes. of lower glute. Yes. Back pain. Those are generally, and then over firing and psoas. All mm -hmm. of them together are generally going to tell you there's pelvic floor misfunction. Right. And so, and generally in a lot of professional athletes, that's why they continually go once a week to get massages done is for mm -hmm. all and so that then working with them to find that connection. And I generally talk, talk, like communicate from their lower abs. And I may bring up pelvic floor, like what's oh, your pelvic floor, lower abs. But most of them have not been communicated what the fuck their pelvic floor is. Most of them mm -hmm. like oh, muscle banding that's in like the base of your yeah. pelvic yes. blah, 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 right? As women were generally taught at a very young age, like what our pelvic floor is. Um, or, or at least we know we have one, whether or not right. you get, well, you get the Kegel conversation with your first baby too, right? Like does that, at some point it comes in from someone saying, even if they don't know what it is, are you doing your Kegels? Okay. Well, look it up. Do those. Yeah. <laughs> look it up. Okay. Yeah. Thing. Or this community yeah. of like, it's this thing, it's this bladdering, like you'll like piss your pants and blah, 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 blah. Right. But the same thing happens to men too. Right, it's, right. Yeah. And as you were saying that when you got on the Olympic lifting and, and, and that bearing down and stuff like that, I was going, I wanted to segue into that, we're like bladder yeah. control with women, right? And especially as a man, you're training and it's like, okay, well, we're going to do these burpees. I, I don't jump. Okay, we're going to do this. Oh, okay, well, no, I don't. Okay, you know, so it's like, okay, well, what's going on from, from a male perspective, working with women, can you explain to us what is happening there? And what are we speaking to? Yeah, so generally what's generally what's happening generally. is because I've heard that too, like, oh, I don't jump, I'll pee my pants when I jump, is that so the front of your pelvic floor is connected to your inner thighs and your lower abdominals. The back of your pelvic floor is connected to your glutes. Um, and so it just means that there's a lack of tone in the in the inner thighs, lower abdominal connection, but then also this awareness of how to pull up and so push down. And so generally with breath, right, there's an inhale, expand, exhale, right, that then we contract and pull up. But unless people are taught to contract and pull up, the moment there's force, they push down, right? Because we're going down, right? If we're doing jumping jacks, if we're doing burpees. Um, so you don't intuitively think to pull up with gravity pulling down at the same time. Yes, and so yeah. some used and I've educated women on our pelvic floor strengtheners that you can insert into the vaginal canal that will teach the pull up. It'll teach how to engage and pull up because if you push down, they'll literally fly out of your pussy. Like they will, like they'll just push out. Mm -hmm. So I wore those several years ago when I was doing some strength training because I wanted to understand strength training. I was having a, a lot of different athletes coming to me with injuries. And so I was wearing these like pelvic floor strengtheners. Um, I could grab them and show them to you that I inserted into my now. And as long as I pulled up and kept those muscles pulling up, they stayed up. And I was doing something like it was a squat, right? With heavy weight. And I went down, totally forgot to engage. They like basically came out in my pants. And so this guy I was working with who is super like, like military male, like I drive trucks and I shoot guns and I have my motorcycles and my boat and he's like don't be a pussy right and I'm like ah, I need to go to the bathroom and he's like don't be a pussy pick up the fucking weight and I was like no really I need to go to the bathroom and then he said something I was like my pussy balls came shooting out in my pants and he's like I don't know what the fuck you just said go to the bathroom whatever <laughs> you do right and then I came back and he's like you hippies and I was like no it's my pelvic floor strength he's like I don't want to know I don't want to know. I was like, I feel like you should know to help you. You should. Yep. He's like, just be quiet. Do whatever it is I asked you to do. <laughs> and I was like, oh, but I think for your female clients, you should. He's like, shh. Like, he didn't even want to know. Wow. Okay. Yeah. He's like, Meh. I don't want to know. You said pussy and you said balls and the same thing. Insert. And <laughs> I don't want to know anything. Right. And so that's my story around, like, it taught me. In that, where I was like, "This is why so many, so many 
like female competitive weightlifters deal with pelvic floor misfunction because with that amount of weight, because I noticed as my weight went up because my quads were getting stronger, right? My glutes are getting stronger, but my inner thighs and pelvic floor were not able to catch up to that weight. And so the only way to go down and then to push up was to bear down. And I was like, this is where the misfunction is. Like this is yes. where I can help to work with female athletes because I, I learn by experience and I learn by feeling. So that's why I put myself through all of that be able to work with people where it's like, okay, here's, here's to work with. Where are these when you work out? They will tell you where your weakness is without you having to think about it. Yes. Right? And so I'll have women wear them for some of the Pilates sessions, right? Like rolling like well, overhead movements. When women do overhead movements, they're like, oh my God, why is my vagina sucking air in? And I'm like, mm, it's, it's, it could be a tightness or it could be a lack of tone. It, it can go hand in hand. Yes of where that is. And so this will give you feedback. Can you hold these in? if you can hold these in, right? And then they can feel the sensation and they can feel it internally, yes. um, whether or not they are. And so, I mean, that's very different coming from me than if you were like, here, client, put the balls, insert right. them. Right, I know exactly. I'm selling them on the wall there and I'll just, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Free with purchase of 10 sessions or more, you get a free yeah. pack of balls. Or you get free pussy balls. <laughs> right. The, um, so then, so what exercises? Now, like, this is like, this is like straight, like, give me as a guy a heads up. What exercises are going to cause these discomforts for women where they're going to say, I need to go to the bathroom or I'm not going to do this exercise. And it's legitimately one of these issues. Oh, totally overhead movements. Right. All, like all overhead movements? Rolling like a ball, okay. um, short spine, right? Anything yeah. corrector. The amount of women who are like, no, I won't do it. Right. right. And like, uh, I won't do it, especially if I have a male teacher, right? My teacher, as we both know, is Chris Robinson. And the amount of women who are like, yeah, I just told Chris I couldn't do overhead movements. And I'm like, wait, what? And I was like, oh, you were, t you were afraid of sucking air into your vagina. And it coming out there like, yes, I was terrified, right? Mm. So because it is, it's, it's this embarrassing thing, unless it's like, oh, here's what's happening, right? So the head movements for women. Um, but then what will help is learning how to connect to the inner thighs and the lower yeah. abdomen, right? And so... Yes. Yeah. So are there... Sorry, not to jump in like too quick on oh. it. My wife's loving this conversation. Um, but are there any verbal cues I can use proactively before I get before we get there? Yeah. So say for because okay. it often happens right in short spine on the reformer because someone's feet are in the straps, right? Right. In their frog, they're coming out. Yes. Then most people for, they don't engage their abs, right? Because they're relying on the straps. Right. We've all seen that as teachers. Mm -hmm. and so then it's I generally start people with their legs up above their hips and connect into their abs and glutes, like to make sure their lower abs, mm -hmm. press them up, right? Yeah. And inner thigh connection. So sometimes I'll give them a ball, I'll give them a ring, whatever tool. If yeah. they're not connect, right? And if they're not able to connect to their inner thighs and low abs, it means they're not ready for the exercise, right? First of all. Right. right. Yeah. Right. So then I'll just give them that, like, okay, let's connect to inner thighs, lower abs, because those are the muscles there, right? Glutes, inner thighs, lower abs. And then, so I'll start with that little lift. And if they're able to get it, then they can go up, but then they have mm. to keep that connection, right? Keep yes. that connection because the moment they bend their knees down to their shoulder blocks, yes. that shit goes wrong. <laughs> because, <laughs> right, they lost the connection to their lower abs their inner thighs. And then every woman who it's happened to knows, oh fuck, the moment I come down, there's, there's no way to not let the air out because we yeah. don't roll over that. Right, right? yeah. And it's just come out and it's like, can, can I control? No, you can't control the air out, right? It's, right. So it just, right. and so it's that inner thigh, that lower glute, right? That wrapping, that like yes. action finding that mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. yeah and so right. that would be the cue and making sure they can keep it right but starting them right yeah, so keep, yeah right yeah. with frogs and leg circles right can they keep it in frogs and leg circles okay if they can keep it there then they're ready for overhead <laughs> do it going like a ball 
Because if right. not queef and rolling like a ball, then they should be able to do it. And um, <laughs> right. on a friend, so I, the moral of the story is I should be listening for it in a roll like a ball. Is that what you're saying? You're like, <laughs> <laughs> there's no way to hide it. Right. right. Like, one of my friends is like, why? <laughs> And she's like, why does my pussy sound like Donald Duck every time I do this movement? I don't <laughs> laugh. I was like, okay, so. This <laughs> Here's the technical reason why Donald Duck is coming out every time. <laughs> laughing so hard because it was, yeah. And I was like, okay, so we're <laughs> here. Like, it's basically you're like you're losing connection and so your body is sucking air in <laughs> that when you come back up it's pushing it back out the term like why does my pussy sound like donald duck and i laugh so hard <laughs> <laughs> so. yeah so if you just tuned in um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so yeah. How, how to engage the muscles of your pelvic floor so that then, yeah, all of yes. this. Yeah, I mean, it'd be a laughing thing with some of my female clients. Yes. Those things happen because then they'll ask me because they also know the other work that I do. They're like, okay, why does this happen? Because it happens in this sex position with my husband and this is something broken. This never happened before. And I'm like, right. what's this? It's no big yeah. And yeah. they're like, oh. Why did anyone tell me this? I was like, let's just work on this. It's okay. It happens to all of us, right? Like doggy style, like, yeah, there's, there's sometimes going to be sounds. Yeah. It's okay. Like, if your partner shames it for you, fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> this is just sometimes part of it. And then when, when you relax certain muscles or like, yeah, it's just yeah. sex makes noises. Right. And, yeah, movement. Yeah. Right, exactly. Um, it's so funny that they segueing from Pilates to sex to there's a stat that said that now more than ever during this pandemic time, there's more of a need for post intimacy connection. The cuddling, the spooning, the intimate conversation afterwards. And they're saying that's so connected to the oxytocin the hormone that's released and we all know from a technical standpoint but just that feel good hormone that's released after is just as important during this time as the actual act oh yeah right like we haven't so many of us who haven't been with um right there's a statistic that it's like generally on average right like kids are hugged seven times a day mm -hmm. adults what was the it was something ridiculous it wasn't even once a day like once a week or yeah, something yeah. right adults that were hugged right and that it takes generally at least so many hugs a day right yes. to feel that sensation and when i read that years ago was when i started hugging all of my clients and the amount of clients were like i just need a hug right i just need to feel held i need to feel that human closeness yes. i feel Right. And we're such a culture that then, right, specifically for males, right, the whole fucking Me Too movement, right, mm -hmm. terrified, right, we're terrified of physical touch, right, and now terrified of this, like, six foot social distancing, like, how do we right. Right. feel like we need, we need that. We need it. Right. Absolutely. We need physical touch. Right? Yeah. I touch myself so much to be like, I need, I, right. <laughs> need physical touch and so if if we don't if we don't recognize that i i don't know how we'll exist like as like right. right that that physical touch is so essential um yeah and to thrive and to feel and yeah so um we're going to need it so much right like there was this hilarious thing that um that poor of a put up, right? It was this video like called Hugging Friends. And it was people yes. just hugging each other, right? Yeah. right? Like our new porn sort of thing. I'm like, oh my God, remember? We're my I know, right? Friends. So <laughs> funny. That was nice when we hugged each other and <laughs> high-fived each other. I know, it's so unmissing. 
Yeah, like that. It, it, it's going to be so. It'll. It will be so interesting, right? Mm -hmm. All of that will play out, and those sort of needs, right? How they, yeah. um, all of it. How they all play out. We have four minutes left on our second hour, Brenda. I know we could just keep talking forever. This is this is our like you guys are like in on our Starbucks conversation like full out this right now. Hang out together. But yes. More about who you are. Yes. <laughs> so I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. Well, let's we got to do this again sometime for sure because like this, I think we still like could have touched on so many other topics and. Yeah. Um, so, so the two of them are like the two will be saved up on on my IG TV there. Okay. And um, I think I'll probably I'll probably edit these and put them on the core conversations page on Facebook as well. You're gonna edit something from our conversations? <laughs> uh, no, actually, probably not. <laughs> edit? Are you going to edit my voice? Are you going to silence me, Martin? Is that what you're? Of saying? course not. Of course not. <laughs> um, and uh, yes. Alex, it takes a strong woman to listen to her husband talk with sex with another woman. <laughs> was that your wife saying that? That was, oh yeah, all night, man. She was like, oh, just, I love it. Yeah, well, she's um, awesome. I look forward to meeting her my next trip to Toronto. Well, I'll have no to doubt. for Starbucks. Yes, and it does take a very strong woman to have your husband talk about sex with another woman on Instagram Live. <laughs> <laughs> I like, thank you for your strength. So. Yes. Thank you. Um, and also, once again, I'll show you, I'll send you a message later with all the questions that will be on the forum and just want to continue this conversation because this has been so good, Brenda. Mm, so good. It's so good to be with you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Much love. All right. I will sign you off and we got like a couple seconds left here just to say goodbye to everyone and I'll, I'll message you in a minute. All right. Sounds good. All right. Okay, awesome. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.